Oh my gosh, so much storytelling, so little time. Um, our next speaker, uh, I love when you can just look at your own life and help people really just reevaluate what's happening in your own space to look at how social change happened. Our next speaker is a filmmaker, artist, and executive producer of Family Pictures USA. Um, in 2009, he founded something called the Digital Diaspora Family Reunion, which is a socially engaged transmedia project that invites folks to explore and share narratives found within their own family photo albums. Uh, in his talk, he's going to share um, what an awe-inspiring tool that a family album can be for people exploring how their ancestors did or did not participate in larger social movements. Um, also, it's pretty cool. He's going to be talking. I think it's tomorrow or Friday, I can't remember, but we're uh, Thursday, which is tomorrow. Thank you. Um, um, and, and we're going to be looking at some of our own family histories and photos and stuff, so it's going to be really great. So please, welcome to the stage. He also lost his phone, so props to him for being super calm and amazing and being like, yeah, I lost my phone. I'm like, in it. There's no good, important family photos on my phone. No. So um, I'm so excited. Please welcome Thomas Van Leer. Thomas Van Leer. <laughs> <laughs> so I just want to say I'm so grateful to, to be here at Frank. This is my first Frank, and it won't be my last. Um, so uh, what we're going to talk about today is revaluing the family album, creating a new purpose for the family album in the digital age. And this journey that I'm on, that I've been on for many years, came out of making these personal films that always somehow end me back at my family album to find stories there and images there. And, um, and so uh, I'll take you to, through my family album. This first image was an image that was taken in the set late 70s. It's featuring me, my mom, my step, South African stepdad, Benjamin Poulet the Nine, and his comrade. Copes. Uh, Lee and Copes were part of the first generation to leave South Africa, first generation of freedom fighters to leave South Africa and transform what was a local movement into an international movement. And that was the anti-apartheid movement. And so Lee became, and Lee became my stepdad. Um, we had a difficult relationship. I, um, you know, I was a uh, rambunctious American child. He was a traditional African father. And whenever like, we would have these moments of silence, I would go to the basement and I would look through his photo images. Out of the, all the people he left South Africa with, and they were one of, the, one of the cells that left, there were 12 of them, most went to Cuba and got military training. My dad decided to come to this country and use journalism as his weapon of choice. And so he had a family album and also an archive. And I would go down and rummage through it. So even though I wasn't talking to him upstairs, I was looking through stuff downstairs. And I fell in love with these images. And so, and when I decided, to, when he died uh, in 2000, I went to South Africa for the first time. And I went with a camera and I started filming. And I realized that the people in South Africa, uh, the young people particularly, did not know the story of this generation that left. Because of apartheid, that history had been whitewashed. So no one knew what these guys were doing. There was this myth that they actually got an education, came back to run the country. But they didn't realize the tremendous uh, suffering that the exile experience uh, was about. And so I decided to take his family album back to South Africa and to encourage young people, or engage young people to use this album to fill in the missing parts of the history. And it wasn't just learning it. Uh, this is a film I made, 12 Disciples of Nelson Mandela. They, I asked them to embody it. So I got these young South African actors, about 100 different actors in Bloemfontein, South Africa, and had them both look at the images, tell the stories, but also connect them to the generation, of Lee's generation. And uh, ironically, some of them were neighbors of, of these guys who had come back these men and women, and, but they didn't know who they were. They didn't know what they did. And so, um, so I, as a kind of Lee's queer son, was able to like, transfer the stories from you know, before to the stories to the, to the generation after me. And so out of that, these young people started writing plays about the 12 disciples. They started doing art projects about the 12 disciples. And lo and behold, the film 12 Disciples of Nelson Mandela and all this activity 
spurred a major impact in the country. So now everyone knows about this generation that left and what they did and their role in igniting a kind of global movement. And for me, it was so awe-inspiring because you know I grew up with him. No one knew about Nelson Mandela for the first eight years of our lives together. And then 1980, all of a sudden, everyone knows about Nelson Mandela. So, uh, so as I told, took the film around the country, people would say to me, can you create something that really helps us repurpose our family album because I have all this stuff and my kids don't see value to it. So I created a project called Digital Diaspora Family Reunion. And Digital Diaspora Family Reunion involved having people come and share their family photographs with us. What we would do is we'd have one-on-one -on -one, one -on -one, um, meetings with folks and guide them through stories in their family albums as a way to begin to scan them as a way to understand also the social historical aspects of the family album. So we traveled with this project to 70 different uh, sites uh, over the course of the last 10 years, interviewing thousands of people about their family albums. And so people would share both one-on-one -on -one with the production team, but they would also share with the larger community and tell their stories. And what we would do is we would give them a mechanism to really understand the stories behind their family albums. So someone came up to me today and she said, I inherited a photograph of my brother, and this, this big image. You know, he looks different than he looks now. Should I keep it? And I'm like, yes, it means something. We have to find a way of preserving these. And what is the story behind that? And why, why is that story important? So, um, so after interviewing all these different people, bringing people to stage. And, and when we had people come up to the stage to share their family album and the story behind their family album, it was so powerful, particularly for people whose histories or stories have been erased or hidden. Um, we decided to create a, um, a television series out of this after traveling around because we wanted to somehow create a major impact for it. Um, one of the things that we realized as we were traveling around with the family album is that people, like one person said to us, uh, I wish you had come a month ago. I inherited two boxes of images from my great-great-grandmother. Uh, I'm sorry, my great-great-grand-aunt. And I didn't know what to do with them. I live in a small apartment in New York City. You know, I'm a young father, so I threw them out. I didn't know they had any value. And I'm like, he threw them out, so he was, you know, he was like, I'm going to go and see if there's still the dumpster. So we realized we needed to make this project larger. You know, we needed to actually create a space for people to share their stories and to see the social historical value of it. So we created a project called Family Pictures USA. It's a, a television series. And what we wanted to do with Family Pictures USA was create, uh, in the words of Howard Zen, a people's history, to bring people together and think about creating, letting, letting the awe in our, my photograph impact you and letting the awe in your photograph impact me so that we could see, share, and celebrate our collective humanity. And so Family Pictures USA, um, I'll just share it right now. Look at these images. Uh -huh. What do these photographs mean to you? This photo means the world to me. That's my great grandfather right there. These are my cousins, and I love them. This is Family Pictures. Family Pictures. Family Pictures USA action. I'm Thomas Allen Harris, host of Family Pictures USA. I take pictures, make films. And now, I'm traveling the country, looking for stories hidden in the family album. He came from nothing and provided for us through picking oranges. That meant the world. My dad worked at this plant for 20 years. Do you have a picture of your dad? This is his ID badge. Whoa! Was it a crisis when you made the shift from tobacco? It's not like a paycheck every month. Yeah. You know, and the yeah. bills certainly come every month. Using family photos, we're expanding our history. My mom brought us here from Vietnam. From Italy. Mexico. From India. From Guatemala. From Iran. Exploring the stories that connect us to people. It's maintaining your life and your culture. And places. What happened to this neighborhood? There were a lot of these uh, beautiful buildings that were mowed over. 
family pictures allows us to come together. And we're one family. And we're one family. <laughs> Join us on this journey, and you'll never see America the same way again. Family Pictures USA, coming to PBS. So the series actually arrived already. It's, it actually showed, uh, was broadcast in August of last year. And it's still streaming on Amazon Prime. And we're about to put it up on YouTube as well. And you know, people are on social media are uploading their photographs and telling their stories. And really telling origin stories. Like what created this place? What, wh where did this family come from? And why is that important? So as we go forward, um, where you know, people also ask us to come to uh, their hometowns for season two. So we're planning the second season of Family Pictures USA. And in the meantime, we're also continuing the movement internationally. Uh, we took Family Pictures to Ethiopia to train journalists and filmmakers to tell indigenous African stories rather than consume Hollywood stories. We took um, Family Pictures to Brazil, to the University of Brasilia, to uh, bring together um, scholars, uh, students, community members at this historic moment when Afro-Brazilian representation at the university is pa on parity with their representation in, in, in the, in the uh, popular in, in the country. <laughs> and here we are with Family Pictures um, you know, moving forward. Um, this is an art uh, television transmedia project that empowers audiences to tell stories and connects people personally with site-specific, history-specific uh, art projects. So uh, we invite everyone to come on tomorrow in the love section and experience it for themselves. Thank you so much. So amazing.